If you're watching this video, you are probably familiar with what a struggle it is to convince your husband, your brother, or any other male relative to visit the doctor. Now, short of knocking them out and taking them there yourself, it's next near impossible. A large-scale study of close to 4 million patients conducted in the UK demonstrated that men were 32% less likely to consult with a primary care provider. Now, primary care providers are trained to screen for various disorders and conditions that men may not notice until it's too late. If you find yourself struggling with urinary symptoms, including an urge to visit the bathroom more, frequently getting up in the night to pee, or trouble starting or stopping your stream, then it may be worth considering a potential diagnosis of benign prosthetic hyperplasia with emphasis on the benign part of the condition. There are other conditions such as prostatitis associated with bacterial infections and they see the cells of the prostate become inflamed causing them to swell and press against the urethra leading to symptoms similar to those experiencing an enlarged prostate. Now, while certain symptoms between the two conditions can present in a similar fashion, men diagnosed with BPH shouldn't stress over the chance of prostatitis evolving into BPH. However, it is possible for the two conditions to coexist, which is why screenings are critical. Now, BPH is so common that some argue the problem is ubiquitous in aging men, though we now know there are some controllable risk factors. Now, the most common intervention that we take is via the use of a 5-alpha reductase enzyme inhibitor. The enzyme converts testosterone into its more active and potent form known as dihydrotestosterone or DHT. DHT tends to act on the prostate, causing it to enlarge, but by reducing the activity of that enzyme, you reduce the active DHT levels and help mitigate further enlargement. Now, the urethra travels through the walnut-shaped prostate gland, and when the tissue swells, it can block the urethra and reduce blood flow to the muscles of the penis. Now, in addition to urinary symptoms, the enlargement makes it difficult to initiate or maintain an erection, worsening symptoms of erectile or ejaculatory dysfunction. Now, with a constricted urethra, urine doesn't flow like it should, and it can build up in the bladder. And like a stagnant pond breeds mosquitoes and other bugs, the stagnant urine sitting in the bladder can become the perfect breeding ground for a host of bacteria. And, and that can lead to frequent UTIs or urinary tract infections, which carry their own unique dangers and symptoms. And the greater danger occurs when the bacteria ascend to the kidneys and begin to damage one of arguably the most critical organs in regulating our daily health. And by managing the enlargement of the prostate gland, we can encourage a reduction in certain risks. But as with all good science, it had to be put to the test. An open, multi-center clinical pilot trial was conducted to determine whether a preparation of an herb known as saw palmetto, synthesized into prostate one from the berries, could influence symptoms of BPH or sexual dysfunction. Now that's because saw palmetto acts as a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, just like the commonly prescribed medications finasteride or dutasteride. And over the course of the eight-week trial, the participants took one 320 milligram capsule of the product and saw their symptoms improve dramatically. Now, their international prostate symptom scores improved by 51%, while their ability to get and keep an erection improved by 64% measured with the brief sexual function inventory. Now, the conversation around saw palmetto, it does raise a lot of questions about sourcing and sustainability. So let's take a deep dive into some of the facts that we know. Saw palmetto is actually the largest wild craft crop harvested in the United States. 2.9 million berries are harvested each year in the humid and sticky heat of Florida, with a harvest ranging anywhere from 4 to 8,000 metric tons. Now, the workers are not only subjected to the intense heat, but the blades of the plant have sharp tips that can shred everyday clothing. And that isn't even touching on the wildlife, which can include the highly venomous eastern diamondback rattlesnake that hides its eight-foot length in the shade of the saw palmetto thickets. And as the plant matures to a fruit producing height of 0.6 meters, sometimes taking a decade or more, it begins to produce the medicinal berry. And from a potency point of view, it's better to wait for the berries to mature on stem rather than picking them and waiting for maturation to occur off stem.
Trouble starts when environmental factors alter the agriculture and lead to lower yields. And those lower yields drive up prices, which may force manufacturers to find other ways to meet their quota, not all legal. Now, saw palmetto has been shown to be effective with a fatty acid composition above 85%. And when you buy berries that can't meet that, it's easy, relatively, to mimic the chem chemical composition of saw palmetto. Companies will adulterate their final product with fatty acid-rich oils like coconut or sunflower oil to make up for the poor harvest, and that means a weaker and less potent product in the end. We also see the underripe berries purchased and turned into a powder before being placed into the product. Again, far weaker. So it's best to confirm with the company how their product is made, whether it's with fatty rich ripe berries or powdered underripe berries. At one capsule a day, Prostate One is a convenient and clinically proven way to add organic salt palmetto to your routine with a robust fatty acid content. Stay healthy, gentlemen.